Howdy neighbor, how is your garden growing? Me, my garden? Well, we have a bit of a mess up front here. And Ben, he is helping take care of that mess. And me, I am not contributing to helping clean up this mess. But what I am gonna be doing today and taking you along for <laughs> is we're gonna go get all those warm weather crops in the back up front here and get them planted in these raised beds. So we have everything from peppers, tomatoes, we have some carrots to get going. So let's get going. So one of the first things we need to do before I jump too far into this project is I need to draw out the front beds because I have not. I've been so focused on mapping out the backyard that I have not mapped out, so you know, done this. You guys have seen this, right? This thing, right? I've mapped this out for this whole season, but I haven't mapped out the front. So we need to map out what's going where on the front because you, maybe like me, you get things going, get them in the ground. You're like, of course I'm gonna remember. And then something happens later in the year and then you're like, which plant was this? And I've tried and I've tried with the little popsicle stick things and somehow they just have a mind of their own. They go far and wide. So the thing that has worked the best for me is drawing it out and then once I plant stuff, write exactly what's going where. So what I'm gonna do right now is we're gonna just quickly map out the front and then generally figure out what's going where. But then I need to do an inventory of actually what do I have? Cause you know, some amount of peppers that I'm gonna plant survived. I have more of some, I have less of others. So what I don't wanna do is have everything get in the ground and then I just got peppers everywhere. <laughs> you know, Peppers everywhere and I have no idea what they are. So let's map out. So what I'm gonna do first is we're gonna just note what this project name is, which is the front vegetable bed and because we're going to be doing so many warm weather crops most of these things are going to be here for the entire season until we get into next year so this is going to be great that I can keep track of it here now all I'm going to do is a very simple drawing this is not going to be to scale so we know that we've got let's do the trellises first they go I like to just do them like this three feet wide and then they're really long, ridiculously long. So we'll just use this space and we'll be like, this is arch trellis west. So just so you guys know, I know, but you guys don't know. And then I'm just gonna make a little notation. This is north. So I'm just pointing which way is north so that later if I need to figure out what goes where, we got it covered. Then we have, of course, let's see, it's about three, that comes most of the way. There's our middle vegetable bed, and then we got another arch trellis. And this is not drawn to scale. Typically, I would measure it out, but I have a general sense of how much fits in here. And this is what we'll figure out when we go up front, is I'll go get more accurate spacing as I kind of semi place things. I just want to have a place that I can note, like, how many peppers did I get in here? How many tomato plants? Who's going? Who's going where? And then we got to just mark that we have those three beds that are collapsing and are doing so bad and are falling apart so badly but I must say you all are so wonderful because you gave me so many tips and ideas I am thinking very hard about which which one of the wonderful suggestions we're going to go forward with a combination of some of you all are very like um, I was the word I want to say like uh, handy, handyman, handy woman inclined. And I feel like great idea, maybe more skill than I have, <laughs> or maybe has tools that I do not have. So I don't know if I'll be able to go forward with them, but they're still really good ideas. And then some I'm like, I think I could maybe make that work. I have to think through it. And then also, cause you know, it's me. It's like, but what also will look cute, you know? My little one's always like, is it too cute? Yes, it has to look too cute. So, but honestly, I'm right where with you all, which is like, we just need to like get them to hold together. Like, I think someone was like, just, just take up, take and just like go around it. And there, there have been points where I've been like, yeah, maybe <laughs> just do that to get through the next like six months. Um, but if I can come up with something cuter than random duct tape, I'm for that more than the random duct tape suggestion. So thank you. But today we have not had enough time from that video coming out and all your suggestions for me to actually pick one and research what I'm able to do. So just know that they're going to look awful and totally falling apart. And I know, and you know, 
that's gonna be one of the things we work on, but that's not gonna be today's thing. Today, we just need to get stuff in the bed that's really good, the Vajega one, um, which I think they're running sales right now. So I'll put the link in the description. Even if they have a better code, if you wanna give me credit, just use my link to get to their page. Even if you use their like, because I have my 10% code, but I think they have better deals right now. So just click my link and then go. And then I get credit if you want to get, but if you don't want to get them right now, don't worry about that. This is for the brand that doesn't suck. The brand that doesn't suck, I won't even tell you where to buy them because don't waste your money. Bad idea. So now let's get back to our little row mat. Thank you for my little, my little session there. Thank you. Thank you. We're all on the same page. Thank you. A couple things I am going to note is that I do know that I can get about four tomatoes on these trellises per side. This is just honestly from experience. I know that's how many fit here with the spacing guidelines. And if you remember, our newer planner has the spacing guidelines in them. So you don't have to be Googling all the time like I used to. Now I just flip to the page, but I know that's how many I can get on each side. Now the question is, is what's going where based on how much I have left. So what I want to note over here is I'm going to start listing the types of tomatoes that I know I have. So we're going to figure out what number. So we'll leave a space for the number. And then I know I have Everglades tomatoes. They are all sitting around in pots in random places. <laughs> the birds did an excellent job of eating tomatoes that I did not collect and distributing them throughout <laughs> the yard. <laughs> but this shows how much birds, like they just like chilling on the edges of container gardens, whether they're these huge raised beds or like little pots, they just pooped like all over the place. But more often I found them in just um, like my five gallon ones up front. So we're gonna take some of those and those will help fill in some spots. And then the rest ones of them are gonna be for these bigger types. So I know I got, hopefully I got four Everglades tomatoes and hopefully I've got four of the other thing. Wait, is it four? <gasps> no, wait, it's six I can do. It's six, darn it, I wrote four. Mm, okay, we're good. Okay, we're adjusting. We're just gonna throw an extra T here and T here <laughs> and T here. Oh no, now it doesn't look cute. That's fine. T and T, right? I think it's six. Yep, it's six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, but it's Everglades tomatoes. I can only do like four because they get huge. Then we know we have some 4th of July. I don't remember if I have tons of 4th of Julys or if I have what I have of what, 4th of July's, and then we have our early start tomatoes. So we need to find out how much we have of those. We also know from the peppers, we have California Wonder. We have Hungarian Wax left over. Um, we have, I think, a pimento or two. What else did I have? A uh, banana, I think I have a couple. And I might have, what was the other one? Banana, pimento, Hungarian wax. Oh, that's right, we had extra Cubanelles. So we just have like a lot. I don't remember how much we have of each, so we'll go count and we'll add a number in here so that we can figure out what's going. How many peppers are we gonna fit in here? And then we'll come up with a, a little like ledger so that we can do like a quick shorthand, kind of like what I did on this page, remember? So I put like just J pepper and we knew J pepper meant jalapeno. So we'll do something like that. And we'll do something similar on here. So we'll make ourselves, our lives a little easier. I'll put probably in this notes section. So this is one of the project pages that you have every month in the planner so that you can plan stuff out, make checklists. You can also like, if you need to do calculations for pricing or um, I've used it in this area before for like, how much soil do I need to fill this bed or cost estimates, volume, space, how many truckloads. Cause you may be like me, you get enthusiastic about a gardening project and then <laughs> All the money later, <laughs> because not only sometimes don't estimate the things that I need, but also, also, actually, actually, sometimes somebody impulse buys when they end up at garden centers. You too? Yeah, me too. So the more I have a list, when I have a list, I'm really good. Also, because my brain goes like, blah, at times I will go buy many of the things I need and then get home, start the project and be like, oh, whoopsies. So this helps keep me, keep me very organized, very organized. So I don't really need to soil. We've already topped off the beds. Oh yeah, that's on my checklist. Let's check that off our checklist. So we can check off, fill the front beds cause that's done, but we have not, oh yeah. 
yeah, we got other stuff we need to do. And Ben's actually doing this right now, the fire bush trimming and cleaning up the stuff. So, yay. Okay, so we got that done. Okay, but now we're focused. We're focused, we're focused. The other thing that I wanna make sure that I know is that this is sweet potatoes, this whole bed. I'm not gonna put any spacing for this because this, this is just, that's all we need to know. It's sweet potatoes and that whole bed. I'm going to put peppers in this bed and this bed. The reason I'm choosing this one to be peppers is because more sun hits this way um, when it comes over Mr. Cliff's Oak, then all, there's a bunch of stuff kind of blocking. So this one gets less light, this one gets most light. So we'll give the pepper bed there. We'll use this as a pepper bed. And then this is gonna be carrots. This is gonna be those, where are they short and sweet? carrots. I collected seeds from my carrots that did amazing this last year and that's where they're gonna go even though the bed's falling apart. <laughs> so whether you're starting your own stuff or you're gonna go and like buy stuff using something like this to just kind of keep yourself organized you can do it in a planner like mine or you can just do it on paper or if you have like a notebook, you know, you do with something like that just so you keep yourself really organized and then you can track what you put where. The other thing I've been doing is I've been noting what day I put stuff in ground. And I don't know if like you, like I just feel like it was yesterday I planted something and then I'm like, oh, how many days? Cause I think a lot of you guys were asking, you're like, oh my gosh, when was that cold snap? The cold snap was this date you guys saw the video like two weeks later but that's when the cold snap is but now i like i've been noting like this is when the so i know now like okay that's the day i actually planted the seeds so i can kind of keep track of like when did i start seeing pop up see so i like i put like beets sprouted so now i'm keeping like really good notes in my planner of like what day things are actually happening so that i can know things because then later when I ask myself questions, I'm like, I don't remember. <laughs> so it'll be good for us also to know when we transplanted that because I think as we get past Christmas, then I'm gonna make some tough choices on, does the plant, and I restart it or, yeah, or, or, or is it allowed to stay? So, cause I am concerned about a lot of these peppers that they've been stressed out and I want a good harvest but I maybe stress them out too much. So my plan is, is if they're not looking at like a certain, I'm gonna make a note to myself on a certain date in December that if they're not looking so good, I'd love your suggestion. Like how many weeks out would you, would you wait to make the call on like, <clears throat> and we're restarting. So let's focus, let's go get our inventory number. So these beds looking really good. Uh, my community members, I just took them through a two week tour of this. So they got to see up close and personal. Everything is doing really well over here. The biggest issue is Mr. and Mrs. Squirrel are gathering all their oak acorns and they keep wanting to dig in here. Now Shiloh has been a big helper with that, but I'm gonna have to reseed a couple spots because they dug up the broccoli. So. But it's looking really cute. I'm gonna tell you that. Everything is doing pretty well. The one thing is, is those green onions, the fairy Morse packet was bad. Nothing, not one has sprouted. So I'm gonna have to replant the green onions. Should put that on my list. But right now we're focusing. Jacqueline, focus. All right, we need to figure out how much we have of each. Everglades tomatoes, I'm gonna have to go walk around. Um, Cubanelle. I'm gonna say we definitely have one. I'm not gonna count that one. That looks silly. I probably will throw it in the ground, but you know, oh, and this is one of the things. Do you guys have to get this with your pepper plants? I know with tomatoes we have this, where they start new roots, but it looks like they're budding. They're trying to root along. So I might bury them deep up until like right here. And this one's trying to do it too. I just don't know. This is like, feels like a waste, but it's alive. So we'll let it try. So we have, I'm gonna call it for sure one Cubanelle. Noted, one Cubanelle. We have one Hungarian, oh no, one, one. We have four Hungarian waxes. There's actually seven technically in here, but we will slim them down. And we actually have Hungarian peppers on here. Can you see that? So we have Hungarian peppers already sprouting. So we have four Hungarian wax peppers that we're gonna put in. We have six California wonders that look super stressed, but we have six of them. So we will note six. California Wonders. Who are these? Who is that one? Who's this? Two banana peppers. Very slow. Oh my gosh, also flowering with a pepper on it. All right, two bananas. <laughs> Remember 
was giving Katrina a hard time about the pimento. She came over and was visiting and she's like, they're really slow starts. Look at them, they're still going. I thought this one for sure was gonna be dead. And they're actually, go oh my gosh, they have peppers on it. Well, you know what, there you go, two pimentos. We'll take it. That's a lot of peppers, hold on, that's 10. That's 15 plants. That's a lot of plants for the space. All right, we'll take those up front in a second. And then let's look at my terrible looking tomatoes. The ones that didn't die in the ground actually seem to be bouncing back. So this says Cubanelle. Oh, <laughs> I was looking at this, I was like, Cubanelle. I was like, there's no Cubanelle tomato. I have put the tray inside of a tray due to using up trays and trying to clean up the area. And I did it on a, okay, that's not helpful. Come on, get out. Early start. Okay, so this is an early start. I think those are for the Glyza. This is, oh, I'm not sorry. They're not called early start, they're early treat tomatoes. And at the end, I'll link this 20 plus varieties if you wanna know what all the varieties I planted. It's in that video. Or my mistakes to avoid on seed starting. I'll put that video at the end too, in case you're, and then 4th of July. So we've got 12 and 6. Okay, so we got 12 early noted, not early start, early treat. So we got 12 of those, 6 of those, and I don't know how many Everglades tomatoes. I can think of at least 3 or 4 plants. Those ones, because these ones don't like go out as far as uh, the Everglades. The Everglades are insane. You do not need a lot of plants for Everglades tomatoes. So let's take these up front and we're gonna go figure out, we're gonna go figure that out. All right. Okay, here we are up front. I use my little handy dandy bins to help me get some of these up here faster. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put out our peppers. So we've got 15 peppers. And I just checked the spacing guidelines in the 2024 planner. So it says 18 inches. Um, I'm gonna try to push it because we have 15 plants. We got 15 plants, we got a lot of plants. So let's see if we can get, you know, nine maybe in here, maybe. Cause then that would put six in the other bed. And I think that's probably about all we can do. I'm setting aside the tomato plants. Um, you might hear some crunchy noises, that's Ben. He is working on clearing off that eastern trellis so that we can plant tomato plants. So let's just move these little guys out of the way. My early treats and my little 4th of July. So this bed, so if you guys remember, if you want to know about a foot, that's about one foot. Look at them, forearm muscles. <laughs> so that's about a foot. Um, so when we look at this bed, I can't remember what the actual spacing is. I think it's like two and a half feet by five and a half feet if I remember. So if we think like square foot gardening, I'm gonna try to get three, three, three. I'm thinking what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the California Wonder because we have six of these up here. And I'm kind of thinking the odds and ends peppers go in the back. Who's this? I can't even tell, which one was this? Pimento or banana? This is banana, so these are pimentos. So I think we're gonna do California Wonders and Hungarian Wax up here. So that's 10. <laughs> do you like how I'm like, we're gonna do nine up here and then we'll put the rest in the back and then I'm like, we're gonna put 10 up here. <laughs> but there's a couple things I need to clear out. I actually have ginger. So in this bed, you guys can see, there's actually, it looks like a couple ginger plants. I don't know. I haven't honestly done anything with the ginger. Maybe I'll just move that, replant that. That hasn't done much. So we'll just move that into a back bed for now. And then I have this, Cuban oregano that my neighbors gave me, which is taking off really nicely. I shoved it in the ground, honestly, because I was like not doing a good job watering it because it was with my native wildflowers and then I planted my native wildflowers and then it was just sitting there and drying out. So I just shoved it in here, not really thinking hard about it. I don't know if this was a good life choice or not. <laughs> Love your opinions, put them in the comments. Now this bed might feel like it's a hot mess to you. It's got all this sunshine mimosa in it, making a little mat. The good thing about the sunshine mimosa is it's supposed to be a nitrogen fixer. Also, it helps the soil not drop quite as much, seeing as there's been really nothing in here. The problem is, is that, like, I didn't really want it in here, but it's fine. We'll go with it. So just know that that's what's going on here. Do not recommend putting sunshine mimosa in your vegetable beds at all. This is just a 
consequence of it having six foot root systems and coming up in through my bed. So yeah, okay, gonna put these. I got my little shovel, we're ready to go. So all my odds and ends peppers, we will move to the side for now for the back bed. And we will focus on first, oh, <laughs> we'll move you out of the way. We'll replant you back there, one of the shadier beds. And we will, let's place out these. So what I'm gonna do is just start taking them out. Oh my gosh. Look at these roots. Holy moly guacamole. So these are really nice. So we got two plants. I'm not gonna separate them. We will see who survives who lives, who dies, and that will make the call. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start by placing. I like to do this first. The soil is semi-moist, so it's not falling apart, plus I got pretty good roots. So we're gonna just start placing them to kind of get an idea of how far apart they need to be. Oh, look at this. Okay, you know what? One there. Ah, oh, come on, root. One, one, one. So we actually have some space in the back. Gently, looks like some people have tried to jump. We're jumping ship. Okay, got those guys. So yeah, I like just laying these out first before I dig holes. That way I can space things accordingly. You can see these guys had been stressed out and the ants have moved in and brought their little aphid farms for them to eat all their sugars. So that's a thing that's happening. So I think I can get across from each other and I can put a bunch or I could do Hungarian wax up here and do more like, if I come back slightly, I'm gonna go, no, that's not a good use of space. Come here. Oh yeah, we could do this. One, two, three. You, whenever you do like diamond diagonals, you can maximize the space. So we could do the six here, and then I can get, let's get those four Hungarians here. Get these guys out. Oh my gosh, oh, it's falling apart, but you can see whole pepper right there. So we put one here. Oh no, this one's totally falling apart. Put one here. Here. Oh, got another. So now we've got one, two, three, four, five, and then, oh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We could probably fit one more right in here, and then we got the Cuban oregano right here. But I, do I want to use one of these? The banana pepper? Hmm. Maybe we just, we end up planting another Hungarian wax seeds right there in the middle. And we'll see. What do you guys think? Maybe we put one more, like a pepper seed just straight there. And then we just let it grow. I don't know. I mean, I've got enough peppers to fill that other, that bed. So I don't want to push it. So we'll just leave it for now. We can always... Yeah, we can always receive later, but you know what, you know, I want your opinion. What do you guys think? Should I plant right in place or just grow another something? And then should I do as a California wonder or more of a Hungarian wax? Because the idea is to pickle Hungarian waxes. I love pickled peppers, they're so good. So let's dig the holes. And remember we are seeing some rooting action kind of, so I'm gonna bury them slightly deeper than what they were, but not by a lot. Just push you down in here. And in you go. The soil is so dark, it's crazy. This is, this is wood chips that broke down plus, uh, what else? Wood chips, soil, all good stuff. All good things, all good things. So let's note what we did. We put uh, how many peppers on one side? We were able to do one, two, three, four. So we did one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we did like a pepper, a pepper, a pepper, a pepper. And then we did it right across. That was not even. We all saw that. It's okay. Pepper, and then I'm gonna put it like. So we're gonna put an O. 
for oregano. P is for pepper. And then what we're gonna put is a CW for each of these, because these are all California wonder. So CW, California wonder. And then we're gonna put an HW for Hungarian wax. So HW, HW, HW. Okay, so there is our front bed. We've got a good game plan. Now let's figure out what peppers are going in here. Ben is doing an amazing job continuing to get this trellis clean so we can get the tomatoes planted. But first, let's get this, this bed. Oh, it is so sad. But this bed, we will put some peppers in it. Look, look, we're just, we're gonna do the best we can with this bed until I can figure out which of y'all's ideas is the one I want to go forward with. It's so sad. Even Ben, as he was cleaning up some of these plants back here, he's like, oh man, another panel fell off. I was like, I know, I know. <laughs> so I'm thinking, because we got five, we'll do two on one side, two on the other. And that's that. This is who? Is this pimento? This is banana. I know I asked this over and over again. So we'll do the two bananas, two pimentos, I will put the cubanelle in the middle and we'll put whatever this is <laughs> back there. Nobody has to look at it, it's sad. Okay, so let's let's start figuring out our spacing. So same idea. So we have Technically six peppers, right? So what did we do? We did two, two, two. So we did, right? What did we do? We did like a pepper, a pepper. Does that look right? Pepper, 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 right? Like that. That looks right. I think that looks right. We think that looks right. Okay. So P is for pepper. A pee pee is gonna be a Petrina pimento pepper. I'm calling them Petrinas. Pimentos. I don't even know if I got it from the same place she did, but we're gonna call it a pee pee. And that's a pee pee, a pee pee. And then we have, of course, our C for Cubanelle. If you were wondering why earlier I was didn't use C for California, it's because on the other page I use C for Cubanelle, so we'll be consistent. So we'll put a C and a P and a C and a P. And then what was the other one? <laughs> I swear I'm not trying to forget, but I keep forgetting it's a banana pepper. Banana pepper. Okay, so we got banana peppers. I could have made that look way cuter, but since we're outside and it's hot and I'm starting to get sweaty, it's not gonna look as cute. So it could look like that. You, when you're not in the sun and you are doing this inside your house in air conditioning, you make it look cuter when you plan out your stuff, okay? Don't be like me. No bueno. So we got Fourth of July. Can you see anything? What? I can't see anything right now. Fourth of July, Everglades, and then ET, early trees. Let's go figure it out. We have 12 early treats. So we'll put the 12 early treats in here. We'll put the 4th of July's on that side and we'll put the, what are they called? Everglades on this side. I have no more thought process against this than that. Again, let me know if you guys have extra thoughts. Not that I'll be able to change it, but right, we learn and we learn and we get better every year. Only moly guacamole, that's a lot of vines. Yeah. Um, you look like you're in a giant bird nest at the moment. Oh, but we need to figure out, do we have at least four Everglades tomato plants? I see one right here. So my, my poor desert rose is like become a trellis for our Everglades tomato here. I know it's Everglades tomato because da 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 da. Tomatoes, oh look, oh no, tomatoes. Well, that's good. They're everywhere. Oh, there's more on there. Okay, well I'll harvest those before I move them stress the plant out. So that's one. Can we find three more? Yeah. Or at least two. I think I can find two. Here we go. I've got at least, let's see. I got one. Yep, one plant here. I got another plant. Oh, I've got two plants here. Three plants here. Okay, we got plenty. So I don't know what I just told you I was going to do because <laughs> there's actually been a, quite a delay since you since we were talking. One, <laughs> because Mr. and Cliff and I had a little chat because we, 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 we enjoy chatting. And really what the chat was about is that 
this soil pile that we still have left over from the backyard thing. And we've already topped off everything we're basically gonna top off. Plus I have tons of bag soil available before I switch gears. So um, he, he was just saying, I've been drooling about the soil. I've been wanting this soil. I would love to take this soil. And then of course we started talking about plants cause that's what we do. Um, so he's excited and he's going to take all of this for us or it, it, it's an early Christmas neighbor gift, you know? Um, but then, Someone decided that they're going to join us and play with the soil before they were going to leave. But then I had to go move a bunch of trucks and things. So um, I don't remember what I was doing. <laughs> so what we will go do is we're going to go put carrot seeds in that bed. I think I was doing some of the tomatoes, maybe, um, which is fine. Ben's still cleaning up this trellis. He got everything off the trellis, but there's so much plant material. <laughs> From those vines plus he was doing like other yard work i'll show you guys really quick he was edging look at how beautiful that is that's so beautiful good job ben he's got this like <laughs> nest worth of vines he's accidentally killed a couple seminal pumpkins i told him that's totally fine because that's going to be our seminal pumpkin area going forward so i'm okay taking some losses because we, ha we have a lot of seminal pumpkins in the house um so i'm not worried and we already got some vines in the area so right now it's just about cleaning up but he's been like so after that, you know, we, he's been doing all this. He's got this giant here, giant pile of stuff. He's got this giant pile. He's got, there's just stuff everywhere. He's done an excellent job cleaning up. Actually, honestly, he had to stop with some of it because I was, we were talking and then it would be too noisy. So um, he's trying to just clean all this stuff up. So I don't remember what we were doing, but now we're gonna go do carrot seeds in this bed and then we will stitch gears and we will start putting the tomatoes. So here. Here are the carrot seeds I harvested earlier this year, all dried and sitting in this bowl, and I probably should have done something better than this, but you know what, this is what we got. And they're all gonna go in this bed. Yay. From the planner, I think it's every three inches you can put them in, So, but we're gonna do trench method. So we'll do rows every six inches apart. The one side of this bed hasn't fallen yet. The back side has fallen, so we will, we'll see what we do. We'll make rows. We'll, we'll just not go too close because I don't want to. <sighs> That's a project. That's going to be pro its own project. So we will, we'll get there. So we're going to do trenches. The mistake I made a couple years ago is I was doing lettuce in this bed. And I just took the seeds and I was like, like as if I was putting salt on the bed, you know, seasoning it. And then I plant it everywhere and there was no clear idea of like where to thin. So what I'm finding better this year is if I trench then I can just focus on the spacing in here and then just trench and then trench and then trench and then trench. And then we'll put the seeds as best we can in that trench. Now these seeds are not pre, pre anything for us. They're just, this is, these are the flower heads from earlier this year. Aren't they pretty? They're pretty. I feel like I should have made a bouquet from them, but I did not. So they're just pretty. Oh, I'm getting seeds everywhere. Okay, we're gonna leave them right there for now. So let's just like put our trenches in, figure out how many we can do. are in. Yay. All right, now we can switch gears and we'll work on the tomato. We're gonna work on the tomatoes. Literally just found an Everglades tomato right next to the trellis. So we're gonna take this one for it will be number one. Just take all this stuff off. Get off. Put all that under the ground. Tomato. I just yanked. I just yanked the whole pot that was over there, and then I just yanked this one. <laughs> we'll get this next one in. Here. Okay, so right about here Yeah. 
this first because it'll probably drop all its fruit. There we go, that couple. Uh huh, uh huh. Uh huh, uh huh. They're so, oh man. I forgot how good these are. Okay, let's try to get this thing out. I'm taking this biggest one and I'm putting it on the north end of the trellis because we are in winter. And whether you live in the north of the state or the south of the state, the sun has moved to the south. And therefore, there is, your plants are gonna just go towards the south. We'll see what happens with this. It might die, it might not die. Time will tell. We'll know in a week. We will legitimately know in one week what's going on with this thing. So, that's buried. We got four Everglades tomato plants on this side. We're good. Let's go get those uh, early treats. They're gonna go in the middle. Let's get that done. Maybe seems shorter to you guys, but this has been a long time. Okay, so let's make sure we know what we did where. But what we're gonna put in here is, we got our Everglades tomatoes here, and we just have four. So I'm just gonna cross that out. Cross that out and put E, T, E, T, E, T. Go away. And then we put the early treats here. I'm just gonna make a note and put E, T, circle i'm just gonna do like a circle and then i'm just gonna run an arrow the whole way down i'm gonna put another et here circle run the arrow down and then i'm gonna put a fourth here circle you, know, you just gotta you gotta save yourself some time so we put four i mean we probably put more but so we got that done we got my six fourth of july's in we got that done we got our 12 early treats in six california wonders four Hungarian waxes, our two Petrina pimentos, two bananas, and one cube, and now, well, actually, technically an extra one. Oh, wait, I didn't even mark this off. I already got the wildflowers done a couple videos ago. All right, 4th of July's in, Everglades in, early treat in. Can I put up with the peppers on here? Well, we're gonna add it right now because I'm giving myself credit. Peppers, all done. And then I need to add for my to-do list for December, um, I need to start I need to start more of those peppers, or no, tomatoes. We're gonna start propagate. So I'm putting that in my December list. Boom. So I know I need to start more seeds for that. Varieties, I think we mentioned the beds you might wanna do. I might have said other stuff. Go check those videos out next. Thank you for hanging out. And if you enjoyed hanging out too, go ahead and give it a like, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. New videos each week, actually twice a week, plus one community video for my members every week. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye.